Damn, that was so f***ing good. It, it's a little convoluted, right? But God, like, once you make sense of it, it's fucking beautiful. It's a great fucking ending, man. God damn, that's a, that's a good game. I, I can't believe so many people shit on that game. Like, the only thing wrong with the game, really, is, like, it does rely on some... A little bit of what you might call lazy writing. You know, some, some MacGuffins, some conveniences. They force some things. But I think that it's worth it. It, that's where I stand on it. I think it's worth it. I feel like this is what people are asking from Final Fantasy now. I feel like this is the kind of like boldness and willingness to depart from, from expectations and defy expectations. I feel like this is the kind of story people want from Final Fantasy right now. Obviously done better. Obviously done better. But I think that's what people want. I think people want something like 8 again. If it's a 40 hour game, the first 10 hours you think you're playing a regular standard Final Fantasy game, and then you hit hour 10 and goodbye! You're not here anymore, you're somewhere else. Like you're, you're just everything's just flips on its head and you have no idea what the fuck is going on anymore. They just play with you for like the next 30 hours. They just fuck with you. And honestly, get me something like that you know honestly i think they did too much but they went so big that i forgive them for it i really feel like the story would needs to be kind of streamlined a little bit and i think the same thing about the game systems trim the fat get rid of some of the needless tedium in the writing and in the game mechanics you've got a banger ass fucking game with some tweaks like that honestly it just just a less is more approach would have done so much for final fantasy 8 that game was great that's one of my favorites that's one of my favorite streams i've ever done on a scale of one to ten what would i give this final fantasy game fittingly i i think the right score is eight for me i think this game is a six in terms of how tedious it is the draw and junction system have negative effects on combat and the pacing of the game and then balance as well is negatively affected. They do some story stuff that is just fucking nuts. Like you spend hours trying to save Renoa. You beat Squall and then he gets up and says, I'll get you next time. And, and I'm, I'm sorry, Cypher. And then Cypher runs out of the room and then Zell runs in the room and says, Cypher just took Renoa. We gotta go save her again. And as a as as the player, I'm watching this and I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, were you drunk that day when you wrote this part of the script? They definitely got a little lazy, cut some corners, and they relied on some super convenience with some of the writing. All of that to me would bring it down to a six, but the reason why I think the eight is justified is because in spite of these like glaring, obvious, in your fucking face flaws, I really think they still succeeded. Man, you just like, how do you not respect what they did in this game? Because they constantly subverted my expectations. And guys, like I'm in my fucking thirties. Like I've been playing games for 25 fucking years, if not more, you know, it's hard for a game to outsmart me now. It's really hard for a game to legitimately catch me off guard. Eight did it multiple times. There were so many moments where this game trolled me or there were just sick fucking moments. Cypher killing Odin was so sick. The optional bosses having weapons in there, sick. It's probably the most fun that I've had streaming all year. Someone in chat said this, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago when I was streaming this game that Renoa and Squall were written the way that they were written intentionally as an apology for Seven and what happened with Cloud and Aerith and Cloud and Tifa and you never really getting a full on romance in that game. I don't know if that's true or if somebody's just sharing their cope in the chat, right? I, I can see where when they when they wrote eight, they said, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna give them a love story this time. We're gonna give it to them. And they did, man, they really did. It's, it's a very teenage love story, for sure. It's a very teenage love story, but I think that story was beautiful. I, I love so many things about it. Again, like the intro of the game, where you see the spot where uh, Renoa and Squall promise to meet, and you see Renoa falling, 
and Squall catching her. And so you think this whole game is going to be about Squall saving Renoa, but then at the end, in that moment, in that place, it's Squall that needs her and, and her that saves him, I think. I think that's beautiful, you know? And also, I, I love how it reciprocates from where she was lost in space and Squall went out and found her and saved her and brought her back. And when Squall was lost in time, Renoa went and found him and brought him back. Like, that's what I took from it. And I thought it was beautiful, man. Like, honestly, I, it just had me choked up. I thought it was, I thought it was beautiful. But man, I think the most beautiful part of it for me, really, and I, I know, I don't know, I don't know how fans feel about it, but the fact that their parents were in love and it was like a for, forbidden romance and they, they never got to be together, but their children found their way to each other. I, I think some people might think that's weird, but I just, man, I thought that was like a really beautiful story, man. It kind of incorporates the theme of destiny a little bit, you know, that love can transcend time and space literally that it can transcend even through people and and through generations and through time I, I just think i think that's beautiful i think that's beautiful because they went so big and so bold with themes like that uh that uh, admittedly i think it was already hard to tell a story like that where you're jumping through time and, and you're telling multiple love stories and multiple timelines at once it was already super difficult and then you've got you're dealing with hardware like the PlayStation 1. I just have to give them their flowers, man, because they went big to tell a beautiful, bold story. And now that I see what it is that they were trying to do, I'm so happy that they did it. I know that they didn't pull it off the way they wanted to, but I just, I think this game needs a remake. You know, I think it deserves a remake. I want this game to have a remake so fucking bad. I would love a modern version of this game that is just more user-friendly, uh, more accessible, uh, less convoluted. I, I I feel like that would mean more to, to fans of Final Fantasy VIII than the, the remake trilogy that they're doing for VII means to fans of VII. I really think that. And the reason why I feel that way is because I feel like the overwhelming majority of VII fans were satisfied with the original. They were satisfied with it. Seven was already great, man. Nine is already great. Ten is already great. But eight is like the black sheep of the family. Eight is like, it feels like eight got left out in the cold a little bit. Like people never really gave eight its flowers, you know? And being sandwiched between seven and nine fucking doesn't help. Eight was so bittersweet because they were going for something, but they didn't quite reach it, but you can see it. You can see what they were going for, and it's just like, it's so worth it. It's so worthy. It's a worthy game and a worthy story that's worth telling. And I feel like it, I feel like 8 needs that remake more than any other Final Fantasy game that I've played. And I think it would mean more to those fans than any of the other remakes that are being done right now, except maybe Tactics. So yeah, I mean, like... Those are, those are my thoughts right now, man. You know, just damn, you know, I, I, I just respect the fucking balls, you know, I respect the fucking balls, man.